Okay, all right. Uh, should probably mark some exams. Let's do this. Online exams. Most of my students probably are going to get 100% because it's online. All right, let's take a look at these marks. 11 out of 20, okay. 13 out of 20, 9 out of 20. 13 out of 20? 1 out of 20? What the f***? Ba -ba -ba boom Welcome back to another YouTube video. Unfortunately, today we're here with some sad news. It's exam season. And unfortunately, the marks that I have seen on some of the exams are not great. The marks on some of the exams for some of the students are equivalent to my IQ. So they're like really low. All right. And so I realized, I'm like, how is this possible? I am the greatest teacher of all time. My knowledge is beyond the, the world's. So how is it that my students are not doing well? Well, today I figured, you know what? Why don't I give you some tips and tricks on how you can study better for exams? Now, obviously you've seen some of the marks, right? Um, and obviously I'm exaggerating some of them, right? But I'm sure some of you did not do well in some of your exams, right? And you can blame a lot of things, the pandemic, online, being stupid, right? There, there, there are some legit reasons, but today I'm gonna help you figure out some ways that you can hopefully do better on your exams. And you can also use this for tests, quizzes, um, and any sort of assessment uh, throughout your schooling and your post-schooling careers. So you're welcome. All right. Uh, it is a little bit darker right now. It is nighttime, so I'm filming this. Uh, but hopefully these help you out. So without further ado, let's get into the video. All right. Number five requires you to have two things in order for this to work. And now you might not have these two things because they're actually very rare to find nowadays in school. A pen and paper. You need both of these things to make number five work, which is you need to learn how to write down your own notes. And I know a lot of you are like, oh my God, writing notes. Oh my God, that's gonna be so hard to do. Why can't we just get fill in the blanks? Because it doesn't help you learn anything. When you actually physically write something down, you retain it much better. There's actually science to prove that. I don't know where the science is because I don't really do science, but it's out there. All right, the actual physical act of writing notes down will actually make you retain information a lot better. And to show you what I mean, I'm actually gonna show you notes from when I was in university back in the 1950s. All right, I'm gonna show you some of my university notes. I actually still have them as you can see. Got binders full of them. I know a lot of you believe I didn't do university, but there's some evidence to show you that I did. But I'll show you exactly what my notes look like. So here's some notes from uh, my bio class. Uh, talking about meiosis, you can see I've written things down here. And I got some stuff back here as well, right? And then on top of that, when I was teaching it, I also wrote down the stuff that I needed to do. So you can see everything I've written down. Uh, this is when I was in teacher's college. Um, all of this, again, written down. Right Back in my day, we did not have computers. You might think that it's very trivial and, oh, no, if I type it out, it's the same thing. It's not. If you actually write things down, you'll, you'll understand it a lot better. Uh, the worst thing you can do is not try it and then complain, oh, I didn't get it. At least try it out for a little bit. This is one of the reasons I never give notes in my classes and one of the reasons why the students hate me. Uh, but, uh, you know, uh, give it a shot. It is really, really helpful. I find that writing things down always helps. Um, and this is a life skill, too. Uh, in the future, if you ever, you know, uh, you know, get some information from somewhere, whether it's a conference, TV, if you write it down, you will retain it better. All right, number four. All right, number four is one I've never actually used myself, but the students that I've had in the past that have done really well always seem to be using this trick, and it's the use of cue cards, all right? Now, if you don't know what cue cards are, basically they are like... small little like paper this size and you write down a term on one side and then you write down the definition on the other side now I personally have never used these because I couldn't afford cue cards ain't nobody got money for that but uh, you can use this again with a piece of paper right write down something on this side and then write the definition or the concept on the other side and so the idea is that uh, when you look at the term, you have to remember, okay, uh, mitosis, all right, what does mitosis mean? And then you try and remember what it is on the other side of that cue card. Again, you can only make cue cards 
if you learn how to use a pencil and pen. So you see how tip number five kind of relates with tip number four. And you're gonna see that's kind of going to be a, uh, a theme in this video where every tip kind of relates with the next tip. And if you do all the tips together, then hopefully you will pass your course. All right, now I would never suggest to use any of these tips if I haven't used them myself. So if I haven't used cue cards, I can't really be sure if they actually work, right? So just for you guys, I'm gonna use cue cards myself to help me remember some concepts about a subject that I'm not particularly um, well versed in, all right? So for example, we're gonna use the cue card technique to help me remember things about math. So for example, math, I've written down math on one side of the cue card. Again, I don't have cue cards, so I use the piece of paper. I've written down one side of math. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna write down everything I know about math. So things that uh, relate to math. So probably multiplication, uh, division, uh, addition, so on and so forth. I'm gonna write these down on the other side of the cue card. And then when I go back to study, I'm gonna remember this. So as you can see, we have math right here. And then on the other side of the cue card, we have what I think about math. It's boring, I don't care about math, but the cue card technique would definitely help you remember that. All right, tip number three. Number three is actually a really good one and one that I used all throughout university and even I use it today. Um, and that's the idea of a mind map or what we call sometimes um, a brain map or word association. Basically what you do is you start with one word in the middle, whatever it is. So let's say we're doing science, we're talking about uh, chromosomes. You start with the word chromosomes in the middle and then from there you branch off into different concepts or ideas that relate with chromosomes. And so what you end up with is uh, a, a big jumbled mess of things that are all connected in some way, shape, or form to chromosomes. This is a really good tool to use once you've done your studying because then it really allows you to recall all the information and see how things connect. It's a visual way of seeing, okay, this concept connects with this concept. And I use this all throughout university. I still use it today uh, when I'm making my notes. Um, this might shock you, but sometimes I do make notes and lesson plan uh, for my classes. So I'll do something like, okay, we're gonna start with this idea and then I'm gonna connect it to this then I'll connect it to this story, and then I'll connect it to this activity. So it kind of all connects so that at the end of it, you have a bunch of different things that all started from one word or from one top. All right, I'll show you an example of a really cool mind map um, that has helped me um, uh, quite a bit in science, and hopefully you can use that to your advantage when you do this for your other courses. All right, I'm now gonna show you how to use a mind map, and you can use this for any topic, any subject, uh, but we're just gonna pick something random. Let's go with something that I know very little about, basketball, right? From basketball, I would branch off into basketball is a sport, all right? Uh, what type of sport is it? Is it, It's a sport that requires a net and a ball, all right? From there, I would go, well, the net and the ball requires five players on both teams, okay? In these five players, there are different positions. You have guards, you have forwards, and you have centers. All right, now centers reminds me of Pokemon. So Pokemon centers are where you go to heal your Pokemon, right? From Pokemon centers, I can think of Nurse Joy. If any of you played the main series game or have watched the, the series, uh, you know Nurse Joy is a very big character uh, that does that. Now Nurse Joy is a nurse, so therefore she must have gone to med school all right now we're at med school med school you're going to probably want to learn about biology right now biology specifically deals with living things so i will put living things right and then from living things we can branch off into uh eukaryotes so for those of you that are smart uh we have eukaryotes and prokaryotes and you might say, okay, well, what are the difference between the two? Well, eukaryotes have more than one cell. Prokaryotes have one cell, right? Now from there, I can go into the different types of organelles that they have. So they have organelles, specifically the organelle that we all know about, mitochondria, right? And we all know, because you're probably saying it right now out loud, is the powerhouse of the cell. And the powerhouse of the cell, you're thinking of something that's very strong. So I'm thinking of myself, 
I am the strongest person, and I play basketball, right? So there's an example of how I just took a random thing like basketball, and I somehow found a way to connect it to biology and then connect it back to myself. So if you're able to do this for your topics, if you're able to do this for your studying uh, material, whatever your exam or test is on, uh, you're probably in a really good spot. All right, we are three tips down. The second tip is actually one that I do on a regular basis, or at least I like to tell myself that I do it. It's actually teaching someone about what it is that you're learning. Now this might sound really weird, but if you are able to teach someone that has no idea what the concept is, no idea what the idea is that you're learning about, then you know what you're talking about. So what I mean by this is, let's say you are doing, or you have an exam about French, all right? Je ne peux parler en français. I think that sounds about right, okay? If I am going to learn about France, France, if I'm going to learn about French, I'm going to study it. I'm going to use all the tips that I mentioned earlier. But then what I'm going to do is I'm going to teach that to someone that doesn't know French or doesn't know as much about French. I'm going to be like, hey, here's how you say this or here's how you say that. You know, if they say, oh, what's the most important thing to learn in French? I would say, je ne... no, I would say, uh, est-ce que je peux aller aux toilettes? Right? That is the most important phrase in all of France. All of French. Okay. So uh, being able to teach someone a concept or an idea is an is a very strong indication that you know what you're talking about and that you know the the uh, the subject really well. Now, I don't want you to get the wrong idea though. Just because you can teach someone something does not mean you are an expert in that. Okay? Because a lot of you will be like, oh, that makes sense. You know, this guy is a biology teacher. He teaches kids about biology. Therefore, he knows about biology. No. I know nothing about biology, but I, just, I know just enough where I can teach it to high school kids and get away with it. All right. But if you are a true expert in what you are learning about, uh, you'll be able to teach people and make them understand. So I'm going to show you an example of me teaching you something that you might not be well accustomed to or know what, a lot about, but it's going to show you how much I know about it. And then that's going to tell me, OK, am I an expert in this? Let's do this. So I'm going to show you how to use OBS Studio, which is what I use when I am streaming. As you can see, I have a lot of the streaming equipment here, lights, green screen, and uh, then I have a lot of the stuff over in there. Um, I'm going to show you all of that and I'm going to show you how to use the program online if any of you are ever interested in Twitch and then you can see how, just how well I know my stuff. I'm not an expert expert per se, but I think I know enough about uh, the program to make it work. All right, here we have my Twitch set up here. As you can see, I have everything kind of loaded up from before. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to add my webcam up into this corner here because right now you can't see my face. So in order for me to do that, what I want to do is I want to go to webcam. And again, this is me telling or teaching you how to do it. I click on activate and bam, there I am. Uh, this is like an inception where I'm on the video of you making a video of me. And just like that, I press activate and boom, there I am up in the top right corner. All right. So hopefully this makes sense. And again, this should show you uh, I am pretty well versed in this and I kind of know what I'm doing. These are all the scenes that you can put in. You can put in your Pokemon. Uh, you can put in the chat box, right? You can uh, I can mess around with the fonts of things. All right, the final thing. This is the best tip I can give you for anything. Doesn't matter if it's school, doesn't matter if it's uh, relationships, doesn't matter if it's work. This is the best tip that you're ever gonna get. Struggle. Okay, I say this every year at the starting of all my classes, you have to learn how to struggle. This is the, not the easiest thing to say, but the hardest thing to do, okay? What do I mean by struggle? I mean, things are not gonna happen the first time you do this, right? All these tips I'm giving you, Maybe they will get you a great grade the first time you do it. Chances are they probably won't though, because you're gonna have to figure out what works best for you and you have to struggle to figure that out. Yes, maybe that means you won't do well on one test. Maybe that means you won't do it well on two tests. Maybe you have to fail six times in a row, right? But as long as you continue to struggle and get better and better, you're going to be better off for it, right? A lot of people think, okay, I'll just do these five tips and boom, I'm a 95% student. No, if you don't know anything from grades one to nine, there's no way you're going to pass grade 10, even if you do all five tips. You know what I mean? So you have to struggle a little bit. You got to work hard. And uh, if I can do it, you definitely can. I've been struggling my whole life. I struggled to graduate high school, struggled to graduate university. I'm struggling to be a teacher, but I'm getting better every single day. Or at least I like to tell myself that so that I can sleep better at night. Okay. You got to struggle. All right. Use all these tips. Hopefully they help you out. Um, but again, things will be different. We're
works for one person might not work for you and vice versa. So there's a lot of things out there that you can do, right? Memorization is always something that you can work on. You can use cue cards, you can use Quizlet, Kahoot, uh, extra help with your teachers. Uh, there's a ton of different things that you can do. Uh, but you just have to struggle and figure out which one works for you. All right. With that, with those five tips, hopefully I've helped you out a little bit. I know it doesn't seem like I'm the smartest guy because uh, I'm not. But I have been around teaching for a couple years now. And the students that do well usually have these five tips or some variation of them, right? Again, find what works best for you, but be open to trying new things. Uh, if I had to pick one tip out of these five that was like the most important one, um, obviously number one, you know, being able to struggle. But uh, personally, I think writing notes is something that today's generation, you guys, the Zoomers, um, are not accustomed to doing. And when you get to university, you think typing notes out is going to help you out. It really doesn't, in my opinion. Okay, so if there's one thing I would really recommend you doing, learn how to take good notes. Okay, with that being said, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you can catch the next video, and help out your fellow classmates. Comment down below what tips and tricks you use to study, or what tips and tricks you use uh, to pass your exams. Okay, help out one of your students or one of your classmates, and they'll help you out as well. Okay. With that being said, I'll catch you in the next video. Comment also down below what you want to see. I have a couple of videos in mind. My editor has some too, uh, but it would be really dope to see what you guys are coming up with. Uh, the next video that I think I have planned is an unboxing video. Uh, your boy invested in some pretty hardcore gaming equipment. Uh, so maybe we do an unboxing video for that. But let me know what you want to see. Maybe an eating out challenge. Maybe, um, uh, you know, a tag of some sort. Uh, I don't know what's currently in trend maybe a spicy chip challenge or whatever uh let me know uh we'll make it happen all right with that being said i'll catch you in the next one